We just came back from AWE 2023, the XR event of Silicon Valley, and it opened our eyes to the strides XR technology has made. AR glasses are now as cool as Tony Stark's, VR is leveling up, and haptics are getting so real, I felt like I time traveled to the future. I couldn't cram all the awesomeness into one short video, so I handpicked my personal favorites just for you. Let's dive in. So we had a chance to try different types of waveguides for AR and smart glasses. And we were wowed by the super thin form factors and that they are actually wireless now. These ultra thin displays might not always be full color. Sometimes it's monochrome like green and it's not very high resolution. But they can still project a crisp heads up display that can show useful info while remaining comfortable. For example, I tried Fusix's smart glasses. This one only showed the HUD in green but look at the size of it. I also checked out the shield, a slightly chunkier one. It's still monochrome but has advanced 3D binocular waveguides powered by micro LED projectors. There are just one micron in size, so it offers one of the highest density pixel arrays providing crisp video with contextual information. Plus the front-facing cameras let you stream video so you can share your perspective to anyone. I thought the quality was impressive. They showed me some 3D models spinning around in a uh, looping video and it was believable. But the DigiLens Argo impressed me the most. It's just as tiny, uses 3rd gen crystal waveguides that have full color displays with 85% transparency. It's packing built-in batteries, powered by a Snapdragon XR2 Gen 1, has 6 stuff tracking and Wi-Fi 6E support amongst other things. Sure, don't expect OLED TV quality colors, and my camera doesn't do it justice, it looks blurry on this video, but let me tell you, witnessing this kind of tech in something so slim is beyond cool. It's a taste of the future, and I'm all here for it when this tech goes mainstream. Now, Ant Reality was also there showcasing their AR plus VR hybrid solutions. I first met them at CES in January and I was already amazed, but now at AWE they showed improvement. Their Crossfire reference design looks like regular sunglasses, but here's the kicker. You can switch between AR and VR with mechanical dynamic dimming, thanks to its polarization optics. This honestly looks unreal to me, but it works. It allows a dimming range from 0.002% to 33%, which is a higher range compared to others. At 0.002% pass through, the backlight is blocked off so well from the real world that even a strong light source like even the sun is blackened. Wait, is that a word? I mean blocked off, so this can fully immerse you in a VR environment. These glasses weigh only 140 grams without cable and has a lens thickness of only 10 millimeters with a field of view 100 degrees which is actually incredibly high for AR. The second device that they were showing off was the Crossfire Max 3K and it has improvement with a resolution of 2880 times 2560 pixels per eye on micro OLEDs and it indeed brought super clear images with great colors. They have now also partnered with the manufacturer of PSVR2, GoTech, to start mass production of and reality's lenses. The end cost will be below $30 a piece, which should be an attractive price for headset manufacturers. Pretty cool to hear that we're getting closer. Now, C Ryu or Creel is developing something else that's also incredible a light field display. I might have showed you this before, but this can generate an image that represents how our eyes work, like how we focus on objects close by and far away. It's basically a different way of presenting light to our eyes, allowing for a true-to-life depth perception for a natural visual experience. This used to be a bit bulky, but they have now unveiled their first AR display that combines this light field technology with normal looking lenses. Here's why it's interesting. If you wear traditional VR headsets, you might have noticed that your eyes might struggle with focusing on near objects as you're essentially looking at a display that's at a fixed distance from your eyes. This solves that. Although I couldn't look at the lens using my own eyes, and I only saw it working with 
their camera, I am interested to see where Cyril takes this promising technology. Now let's reel it in closer, something you can try at home. Brilliant Labs Monocle is a tiny open source AR device, costing $349 that clips onto regular glasses and fits in the palm of your hand. Monocle is all about making AR friendly and accessible. It's got a 640 times 400 pixel micro OLED display with a slim 20 degree field of view. Logically, it doesn't focus on heavy graphics, but what's cool is how it makes experimenting with it easy. Stanford students, for instance, integrated ChatGPT into Monocle for face-to-face -face conversational aids. Imagine dating with that. Yeah, this went viral on Twitter. Though it's not visually as advanced as its big brothers like Microsoft HoloLens, its simplicity and openness are its charms. Its hardware can be easily tweaked and customized by developers or you if you're interested in playing with it. Monocle might be small, but I think it's a big step for creativity and AR tinkering. I'll put the link below. Now before I move on to some awesome VR tech. First, a question. Tell me, do you have any bad habits? I know I have them and sometimes the trick to shaking off bad habits is to simply trade them in for some good ones. We're talking about a sponsor of this portion of this video, Fume, an awards nominated device that's here to create positive habits. No, it's not what it looks like. There are no electronics in here, no vapor. It's all natural, harnessing flavored air through diffusion. It uses these naturally plant infused cores, which are ethically sourced and organic. I like it, it's simple but well designed with a snappy tactile structure. This is for fidgeting, to keep your hands occupied. It's also used to tweak the airflow to your liking. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to expect at first, but Fume surprised me with its freshness and flavors and that sleek wood design. Super chic, I felt cool using it all weekend. So if you want to check it out for yourself, head to tryfume.com slash cherry. That's tryfum.com or use the link below and use code cherry to get 10% off today. Let's continue. Hidden in a corner was the Exit Suit, a custom-made suit tailored to your bag that lets you move in amazing ways in VR. Its idea is very interesting. They're open sourcing it, so anyone could build it at home at a relatively low cost. You'll need basic tools, but the designs are user-friendly, customizable, and the system is modular, with force feedback potential. You can hot swap things like base motor drivers and other features, plus it's using sustainable tech. Sadly, the clock beat me and I could not try it, but we were watching someone play Population 1 in this suit and it looked awesome. If you're interested, you can join their Discord to follow their progress. Hypervision was a scene stealer with their optics game. They showcase lenses with a jaw-dropping 240 degree field of view. Basically, human-level peripheral vision. Check this out, it's their second gen that's now based on pancake lenses which means it's designed to fit tiny form factors. I got to look at a VR demo using these and I tried moving my eyes without moving my head and I instantly noticed so much more detail like there was this little bee flying around in my far peripheral and I saw it, something I wouldn't have noticed with slimmer FOVs. Plus the edge to edge clarity was great. I was worried that I could see the crease but it wasn't noticeable. Hyper Vision said that they used some advanced software trick, amongst other things, to fix that issue. I mean, we've been craving this kind of peripheral awareness in VR and mixed reality, and Hypervision seems to be the first to deliver. It's exciting. I was also happy to see Lenovo back in the VR game. They've made consumer headsets before and even teamed up with Oculus for the Rift S, but then they went radio silent for a bit. Now they're making waves with their new standalone VR headset, the Think Reality. The VRX. Though Lenovo is pitching this to the business crowd, it confirms again that the near future of VR is all about being slim, lightweight, and embracing mixed reality. The VRX looks sleek. It runs on a Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 1 and provides full color, high resolution pass through, which looks great. It has comfort enhancing innovations and the hole punch controllers are a quirky touch, making them uber lightweight. At AWE, they announced the headset is now available in select countries at a 1299 price tag, including extensive support for business features with the aim to revamp enterprise efficiency in training, collaboration and 3D design. Seems kind of perfect for those seeking an enterprise-grade headset. Now here's something for consumers. 
You might have seen us cover this already, but this is the first time we've managed to capture some actual in-game footage to show you what Build 5 is actually like. If you're not familiar with them, it's an AR system that uses innovative projection technology to pair AR glasses with a board creating 3D worlds that spring to life on your tabletop. Plus, it comes with a 6 dof wand controller for interacting with these environments. Or flip it over and game on like it's a regular controller. What you're seeing on screen right now is precisely what materializes through the glasses. It's insanely cool. And if you have a crew, you can kit them out with glasses and dive into a shared adventure on a single board. This is kind of like a time warp to the future of board games, except the future is now. Tilt 5 has been amping up its game library and constantly adding new ones, so keep your eyes peeled for this one. Then this company came out of nowhere, sightful, sneakily unveiled space top. Their augmented reality laptop, which is like having a massive 100 inch virtual desktop that you can carry in your backpack. The magic combo is AR glasses with a keyboard. As you can see, it's neat and compact. It employs actual light AR glasses that project screens before your eyes so no monitor needed. These bad boys come with 6 dot tracking, a 43 degree field of view, and full HD resolution per eye. Check out my review of the x real light, they're pretty great. Under Space Top's hood resides a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and an alleged 5 hour battery life. Space Top uses its own Android based OS. Think Chromebook. At the event, I could give it a try and popular web apps check, but don't expect heavy-duty apps like Photoshop or Blender. What I thought was cool though was the ability to drag windows around in a 180-degree arc. Something not possible in real life, so I had a huge monitor and that looked sharp. I could actually see myself using this. So they have already secured $61 million in funding and Saifu is launching in July priced at $2,000 with only 1,000 units available initially. It's expensive, but if you're a frequent traveler, you might be interested to see how this tech evolves. Now time for some haptics. I featured many haptic gloves before, usually meant for businesses. But I find them exciting as today's enterprise gadgets could be tomorrow's consumer goodies. So what caught my eye this time was Contact CI's Maestro EP, which boasts a sleek wireless design unlike the usual huge skeleton gloves. It employs a proprietary system that mimics tendons to simulate force on each finger. With over 100 unique fingertips vibrations, I could feel actions like flipping switches and lifting blocks in VR. And it actually felt tangible. It would be awesome to see working gloves like these for consumers finally. I also stumbled upon a startup named Fluid Reality. They use fluid-filled bubbles as actuators that imprint shapes on your skin and are controlled like pixels on a screen. Check out this footage to see it in action. What sets Fluid Reality apart is this technology's extreme compactness, enabling thin, lightweight, and untethered haptic devices. In addition, it can easily control and power a large number of actuators, which means a high coverage area and the sensations are highly detailed. Just imagine that in haptic suits. Having tried it myself, I'm convinced that fluid reality has the potential to be a game changer in the haptics industry. We found another interesting company making a high performance 3D force feedback controller. This is the Haply Inverse 3. It's designed to simulate intricate sensations, think cutting tissue or drilling bone. What blew my mind was how lifelike it felt. I could feel the texture and movements of this little ball with incredible precision. Plus, you can hook up several VR controllers to it for added compatibility. VR is getting more real every day and I love it. Now here's another question. Do you agree that typing in VR is a drag? Well, here's a cool XR accessory to tackle that. Tap XR is like striving a full keyboard with 100 plus commands on your wrist. It uses a combination of motion and optical sensors for hand and finger tracking, allowing it to detect taps and other gestures on any surface, even your own skin. And it should even work in low light situations. 
situations. I tested it and I found it very responsive. Trying to master the finger combos took more than a hot minute though, but I think practice makes perfect. The website claims that users have demonstrated typing over 70 words per minute with a single hand, which is double the pace of the national two-handed typing average. Pretty crazy. Now, it's compatible with anything that has Bluetooth 4.0 or better, including MetaQuest, Pico, or even regular Windows, iOS, and Android devices. If you're interested, you can pre-order one now for $249 on their website, and I have to say, I'm pretty intrigued. Up next is Ultra Leap's revamped Leap Motion Controller 2. For those unacquainted, Ultra Leap's devices are known for their stellar hand tracking accuracy. The previous model had its share of gripes, notably the narrow field of view, but this next generation takes it up a notch. Better cameras via higher res cameras, a wider field of view, and lower power consumption. Some VR headsets already integrate Leap Motion, like the Lynx R1, and during the show we got to try it with the Tilt 5, this was awesome. But what about consumer applications? VTubers are using it to show hand movements to their viewers, or you could use it to control your PC with just your hand. You can pre-order one for $139. Now this is something I absolutely loved as well. XR AI is software that converts speech into subtitles in real time. The software can subtitle and translate over 75 languages on the fly. So while you're talking to people. Plus, there's a built-in AI assistant to summarize conversations and more. It makes use of ChatGPT, but you can also pick other AI models. And it works with just your phone, but they're also aiming to support a variety of AR glasses. This is a breakthrough for those with hearing impairments, and even on a personal note. I'm a second generation immigrant with Chinese speaking parents, so I predominantly speak Dutch while they don't, so there's a language barrier. XR AI could easily bridge that gap, something that will be incredibly meaningful to me. I'm definitely giving this a try. You can also give it a try right now for free while the app is in early access. Just look for XR AI in the app store on your phone. Now Qualcomm was also there. But no news on the fresh XR chips except for that tantalizing hint that the Quest 3 will utilize Qualcomm's new chip. However, their software division Snapdragon Spaces showed off a new feature called the Dual Render Fusion in their free SDK. It's designed to help devs effortlessly transform their 2D apps into spatial 3D experiences with little prior knowledge. This could be important as it could unlock an untapped market of millions of mobile developers, which is great news for AR enthusiasts. Lastly, I got my hands on Zapbox, which the company behind it claims is the most budget-friendly smartphone-powered mixed reality headset on the planet. For about 90 euros, you get two Bluetooth 6 stuff controllers with Quest-like input and a lightweight headset that can do a 100-degree view to view. But you need to pop in your smartphone and set up world anchor markers, but then you're set for a 6 stuff VR experience. For mixed reality or MR, the phone's camera is leverage for pass-through at 60 fps. But here's the thing, it did look sharp and it was functional, I even played open brush, but I didn't find it a very comfortable experience. I think extended use could strain your eyes, so while Zapbox could make MR more accessible, don't mistake it for the full-blown MR experience of pricier headsets. And those were my highlights of AWE 2023. Which one of these did you think was super cool or not at all? Let me know down below. I've got more XR advancements here in my CES video, take a look if you haven't yet as that showcases the future of VR even more. Thank you so much for being here, special shout out to our champs, and if you can't get enough of our XR content, join us beyond reality by subscribing.